Hello, Michael Tracy here. Big news. WikiLeaks is back. WikiLeaks has released a trove of documents today pertaining to the CIA. Um, it's been described by various news outlets as the biggest release of CIA, CIA documents ever. So that's a massive deal. Um, as of now, the authentic authenticity of the documents appears to have been corroborated. Shane Harris, a uh, reporter with the Wall Street Journal, says a source in the know has uh, confirmed to him that the documents are authentic and they could be even ultimately even more consequential than the Snowden releases. And the Snowden releases, you know, caused reverberations worldwide, uh, massive outrage, not just in the United States, but all over the, the world, literally. Um, that was really a turning point in how people conceive of their civil liber civil liberties and the threat that their liberties might be under by ubiquitous, ubiquitous government surveillance. So if this supersedes the Snowden leaks in terms of impact, um, that would be beyond massive. It's hard to even contemplate how massive that would be. Um, so there's a, a ton to go through here, um, and I personally haven't been able to do it yet. Uh, this came out a couple hours ago. And uh, so there'll, there'll be plenty of time for that going forward. Um, I think what's crucial to emphasize now is that, well, let me just go through a, a couple of the preliminary things that seem to have been revealed. Um, and I, I linked in the description box to um, an intercept write-up uh, discussing some of this. The first is that the CIA apparently has the capacity to hack into smart TV devices and to mask that hacking so that people aren't aware that the smart TV device is recording at any given time, but it is. Um, so in, the, in your most private moments, if you've got one of these devices, um, it could very well be monitoring you, which is highly disturbing. Um, basically what this seems to do is just confirm everyone's worst theories as to what the CIA might be capable of and what it might be doing. Um, what's also been revealed is that smartphones, iPhones, Androids, etc., even if you have encryption technology on your phone, so if you have, even if you have the app Signal, which everybody should download now, um, even if you're using uh, various encrypted email technology, the CIA could bypass that technology by hacking the phone itself. And then if they're able to do, to do that, then whatever encryption technology you install uh, becomes ineffectual. So that's also disturbing. It's not, and, and it's to be clear, it's not that the encryption technology itself is compromised. It's that the hardware on which the encryption software is running is compromised. Um, so encryption still works and people should definitely use it um but the uh, i think what what matters here is that the cia is developing ways to circumvent um encryption because they can't really they can't find a back end themselves so that has really damaging um implications for press freedom journalists now pretty um pretty widely use encryption technologies to communicate with sources even people who are non-journalists um, tend to use Signal and other, other services simply so they can communicate over the internet um, or through phone networks without having to worry about being surveilled. Um, so uh, apparently there is, there is a way to, to bypass this and um, that's, that's troubling. Again, it's not that encryption, encryption itself has been compromised, it's that there are now workarounds being um, being employed to to render encryption ineffectual. Um, so I think another point that needs to be addressed here is that Democrats and liberals and some conservatives have spent the better part of the last I don't know six months demonizing WikiLeaks, um, attacking Julian Assange personally, um, characterizing them as nothing more than an asset of Russian intelligence services, and so on and so forth. So I, th and that I and others have been criticizing as short-sighted because eventually 
what you'll probably have is WikiLeaks again being um, provided another significant release of information. And partisan Democrats now and, and, part, and, and liberals are going to instinctively distrust that information as a result of the line that they've been fed for so long now about the supposed nefarious nature of WikiLeaks. Um, so if you believe that WikiLeaks was the instrument of Russia in um, undermining the 2016 election and you're really mad about that and you remain mad about it um, after so many months, now you're probably going to in in instinctively dismiss this as some kind of conspiracy that WikiLeaks is party to, to, I don't know, help Trump, which is ridiculous. Um, if, if you believe Trump is a fascist or you believe he's the worst person ever, um, why would you want him to have these powers at, in his arsenal that, that he can wield against you and your, you know, your allies? Um, so uh, even if this does direct attention in the short term away from Trump's various problems, in the long term, it's absolutely vital that um, these powers that the government has at its uh, disposal be exposed, especially if they, um, especially if they result in the curtailment of civil liberties, which they almost certainly do if the if the recent reporting is accurate, and it seems that it, it very well, uh, it very probably is. Um, this also, I think, illustrates a problem with liberals cheering on the deep state lately. Remember, there was this big meme going around um, over the past couple of weeks, and it just kind of just kind of saw a resurgence in the past couple of days that, um, oh, the, the Trump administration is just demonizing the deep state for leaking stuff against them uh, because they want to, you know, wiggle their way out of a political problem. And the deep state actually com is comprised of valiant career servants who are just looking out for the best interests of the country. Um, and so you saw Democrats unbelievably um, start to you know, cheer and celebrate the quote unquote deep state. And you know, I've done a video on this before. The, the, def, the, the deep, deep notion of a deep state is sort of hazy. Um, it has various elements. Um, I won't get into all of that now, but there very clearly does exist a structure within the federal government that is not subject to democratic checks. Um, and the CIA would definitely be within that structure. And um, they use their immunity to democratic checks to exert influence without the consent of the populace. Um, and one of the things they do is do things like this that have just been revealed today. So the idea that the deep state should be cheered on or the CIA are our best friends, I mean, this is something that you saw uh, extremely frequently over the past couple months from, from liberals and, and Democrats. It's incredibly short-sighted thinking because Anybody even just remotely familiar with the history of the CIA shouldn't be surprised at all that they would develop these these tactics. Um, and um, you know, they're not even if they might even if the CIA might be opposed or factions within the CIA might be opposed to Trump um, in the short term. It doesn't mean that rehabilitating the CIA's image as benevolent actors is warranted because. You never know what the circumstances might be in six months or a year from now when um, they once again are maybe working on behalf of Trump to do some something something sinister. Um, uh, and I think I think you get the point there. Um, hopefully, it's now been illustrated that 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 cheering was incredibly misguided. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I would love to get further into the substance of what's been released here, but. You know, it's just so it's just so huge, and, and it requires some degree of technical expertise to comment on. Um, so I don't want to get ahead of myself and just rashly opine on stuff. Um, but you know, just in the initial reaction to the release, what you saw was this paranoid style of thinking that liberals have fostered um, really manifest once again. I mean, people speculating that you know this is just this is just WikiLeaks. Attempting to to save uh, shield Trump from scrutiny, or um, why can't WikiLeaks hack into Trump's tax returns? Um, the fact that they would instead release the most the biggest trove of CIA documents ever that doesn't matter to them. All, all they're, they're single mindedly focused on whatever can just be uh, construed as an effective short term attack on Trump. That's all they care about. 
Uh, but yeah, but people should care about this because tr these are powers that Trump himself could wield. And um, it's very troubling, and I think people should should you know take this to heart. You know, look through the documents yourself. One of the advantages of WikiLeaks is that um, it doesn't just you know keep its publications to itself or allow just a handful of journalists to view them. It allows the entire public to view them, um, and then uh, people can f form their own conclusions, consult experts, consult uh, various other sources, and. Um, it becomes within in the public domain, um, so it's not the it's the, it's not just a privileged few who have access to the information. So that'll do it for now. Um, hopefully, uh, there'll be much more to say on this soon. And uh, have a great day.